Christian contemplation, from contemplatio Latin, Greek theoria, theoria, refers to several Christian practices which aim at looking at, gazing at, being aware of God or the divine. It includes several practices and theological concepts, and until the 6th century the practice of what is now called mysticism was referred to by the term contemplatio, c. q. theoria. Christianity took up the use of both the Greek theoria and Latin contemplatio, contemplation terminology to describe various forms of prayer and the process of coming to know God. Eastern and Western traditions of Christianity grew apart as they incorporated the general notion of theoria into their respective teachings. The Catechism of the Catholic Church states that, "...the Christian tradition comprises three major expressions of the life of prayer, vocal prayer, meditation, and contemplative prayer. They have in common the recollection of the heart." Three stages are discerned in contemplative practice, namely purgative contemplation, contemplation proper, and the vision of God. etymology. <inaudible> <inaudible> The Greek theoria, theoria from which the English word theory and theater is derived, meant contemplation, speculation, a looking at, things looked at. From theorain, theorain to consider, speculate, look at. From theoros, theor spectator. From thea, the a view, plus horon, horon to see. It expressed the state of being a spectator. Both Greek theoria and Latin contemplatio primarily meant looking at things, whether with the eyes or with the mind, commenting on Aristotle's view of the lack of practical usefulness of the contemplation of theoria, Orthodox theologian Fr. Andrew Louth said, The word theoria is derived from a verb meaning to look, or to see, for the Greeks, knowing was a kind of seeing, a sort of intellectual seeing. Contemplation is, then, knowledge, knowledge of reality itself, as opposed to knowing how, the kind of know-how involved in getting things done. To this contrast between the act of life and contemplation there corresponds a distinction in our understanding of what it is to be human between reason conceived as puzzling things out, solving problems, calculating and making decisions, referred to by the Greek words phronesis and dianoia, or in Latin by ratio, and reason conceived as receptive of truth, beholding, looking, referred to by the Greek words theoria or sophia wisdom or nous intellect, or in Latin intellectus. Augustine expressed this distinction by using scientia for the kind of knowledge attained by ratio, and sapientia, wisdom, for the kind of knowledge received by intellectus. Human intelligence operates at two levels, a basic level concerned with doing things, and another level concerned with simply beholding, contemplating, knowing reality. According to William Johnston, until the 6th century the practice of what is now called mysticism was referred to by the term contemplatio, c. q. theoria. According to Johnston, B -O -T -H contemplation and mysticism speak of the eye of love which is looking at, gazing at, aware of divine realities. Several scholars have demonstrated similarities between the Greek idea of theoria and the Indian idea of darsana, darshan, including Ian Rutherford and Gregory Grieve. Topic: <laughs> Greek philosophy. The term theoria was used by the ancient Greeks to refer to the act of experiencing or observing, and then comprehending through nous. Plato For Plato, what the contemplative theoros contemplates theorē are the forms, the realities underlying the individual appearances, and one who contemplates these atemporal and aspatial realities is enriched with a perspective on ordinary things superior to that of ordinary people. Philip of Opus viewed theoria as contemplation of the stars, with practical effects in everyday life similar to those that Plato saw as following from contemplation of the forms. Topic. Aristotle Aristotle, on the other hand, separated the spectating of theoria from practical purposes, and saw it as an end in itself, the highest activity of man. To indicate that it is the philosopher who devotes himself to pursuits most worthy of a free man, Heraclides of Pontus compared him to a spectator theoros at the Olympic spectacle. Unlike the other participants, he does not seek either glory, as does the competitor, or money, as does the businessman. Aristotle used the same image 
As we go to the Olympian festival for the sake of the spectacle, Theus even if nothing more should come of it, for the theoria, theoria itself is more precious than money, and just as we go to theorize theorumen at the festival of Dionysus not so that we will gain anything from the actors indeed we pay to see them, so too the theoria, theoria of the universe must be honored above all things that are considered to be useful. For surely we would not go to such trouble to see men imitating women and slaves, or athletes fighting and running, and not consider it right to theorize without payment theorane amesthi the nature and truth of reality. Indeed, Andrea Wilson Nightingale says that Aristotle considers that those who, instead of pursuing theoria for its own sake, would put it to useful ends would be engaging in theoria in the wrong way, and Richard Kraut says that, for Aristotle, theoretical activity alone has limitless value. Thomas Louis Schubeck says that, in Aristotle's view, the knowledge that guides ethical political activity does not belong to theoria. Leading a contemplative life can be considered Aristotle's answer to the question what life humans ought to live. The more humans engage in contemplation, the closer they are to their gods and the more perfect will be their happiness. Aristotle's view that the best life would be a purely contemplative intellectual one was disputed by the Stoics and others, such as the Epicureans, who saw speculation as inferior to practical ethics. Middle Platonism and Neoplatonism considered contemplation superior and saw as its goal the knowledge of God or union with Him, so that a contemplative life was a life devoted to God rather than to any kind of activity. Topic. Plotinus In the Aeneids of Plotinus, a founder of Neoplatonism, everything is contemplation theoria and everything is derived from contemplation. The first hypostasis, the one, is contemplation by the noose, or second hypostasis in that, it turns to itself in the simplest regard, implying no complexity or need. This reflecting back on itself emanated not created the second hypostasis, intellect in Greek nous, nous, Plotinus describes as living contemplation, being self-reflective and contemplative activity par excellence, and the third hypostatic level has theoria. Knowledge of the one is achieved through experience of its power, an experience that is contemplation theoria of the source of all things. Plotinus agreed with Aristotle's systematic distinction between contemplation theoria and practice praxis. Dedication to the superior life of theoria requires abstention from practical, active life. Plotinus explained, The point of action is contemplation. Contemplation is therefore the end of action. And such is the life of the divinity and of divine and blessed men, detachments from all things here below, scorn of all earthly pleasures, the flight of the lone to the alone. Topic: <laughs> Christian contemplation. Contemplative or mystical practice is a long-standing and integral part of the life of Christian churches. In the Eastern Orthodox churches, the predominant form is hesychasm, stillness. In both Eastern and Western Christianity it is part of mystical practices. <laughs> Early Christianity <laughs> Theoria Some Neoplatonic ideas were adopted by Christianity, among them the idea of theoria or contemplation, taken over by Gregory of Nyssa for example. The Brill Dictionary of Gregory of Nyssa remarks that contemplation in Gregory is described as a loving contemplation, and, according to Thomas Keating, the Greek fathers of the Church, in taking over from the Neoplatonists the word theoria, attached to it the idea expressed by the Hebrew word da'ath, which, though usually translated as knowledge is a much stronger term, since it indicates the experiential knowledge that comes with love and that involves the whole person, not merely the mind. Among the Greek fathers, Christian theoria was not contemplation of Platonic ideas nor of the astronomical heavens of Pontic Heraclitus, but studying the scriptures. With an emphasis on the spiritual sense, later, contemplation came to be distinguished from intellectual life, leading to the identification of theoria or contemplatio with a form of prayer distinguished from discursive meditation in both East and West. Some make a further distinction, within contemplation, between contemplation acquired by human effort and infused contemplation. Topic. 
Allegorical truth In early Christianity the term, mysticos, referred to three dimensions, which soon became intertwined, namely the biblical, the liturgical and the spiritual or contemplative. The biblical dimension refers to hidden or allegorical interpretations of scriptures. The liturgical dimension refers to the liturgical mystery of the Eucharist, the presence of Christ at the Eucharist. The third dimension is the contemplative or experiential knowledge of God. Under the influence of Pseudo Dionysus the Areopagite, the mystical theology came to denote the investigation of the allegorical truth of the Bible, and the spiritual awareness of the ineffable absolute beyond the theology of divine names. Pseudo Dionysus apophatic theology, or negative theology, exerted a great influence on medieval monastic religiosity. It was influenced by Neoplatonism, and very influential in Eastern Orthodox Christian theology. In Western Christianity it was a counter-current to the prevailing cataphatic theology or positive theology. Theoria enabled the Fathers to perceive depths of meaning in the biblical writings that escape a purely scientific or empirical approach to interpretation. The Antiochene Fathers, in particular, saw in every passage of Scripture a double meaning, both literal and spiritual. As Francis Margaret Young notes, best translated in this context as a type of insight. Theoria was the act of perceiving in the wording and story of scripture a moral and spiritual meaning, and may be regarded as a form of allegory. <laughs> Eastern Orthodox Christianity According to John Romanides, in the teachings of Eastern Orthodox Christianity the quintessential purpose and goal of the Christian life is to attain theosis or deification, understood as likeness to or union with God. Theosis is expressed as being, union with God, and having a relationship or synergy between God and man. God is the kingdom of heaven. Theosis or unity with God is obtained by engaging in contemplative prayer, the first stage of theoria, which results from the cultivation of watchfulness GK, nepsis. In theoria, one comes to see or behold God or uncreated light, a grace which is uncreated. In the Eastern Christian traditions, theoria is the most critical component needed for a person to be considered a theologian, however it is not necessary for one's salvation. An experience of God is necessary to the spiritual and mental health of every created thing, including human beings. Knowledge of God is not intellectual, but existential. According to Eastern theologian Andrew Lau, the purpose of theology as a science is to prepare for contemplation, rather than theology being the purpose of contemplation. Theoria is the main aim of hesychasm, which, under the influence of Saint Simeon the New Theologian, developed out of the practice of quietism. Simeon believed that direct experience gave monks the authority to preach and give absolution of sins, without the need for formal ordination. While church authorities also taught from a speculative and philosophical perspective, Simeon taught from his own direct mystical experience, and met with strong resistance for his charismatic approach, and his support of individual direct experience of God's grace. According to John Romanides, this difference in teachings on the possibility to experience God or the uncreated light is at the very heart of many theological conflicts between Eastern Orthodox Christianity and Western Christianity, which is seen to culminate in the conflict over hesychasm. According to John Romanides, following Vladimir Lossky in his interpretation of St. Gregory Palamas, the teaching that God is transcendent, incomprehensible in usia, essence or being, has led in the West to the mis understanding that God cannot be experienced experienced in this life. Romanides states that Western theology is more dependent upon logic and reason, culminating in scholasticism used to validate truth and the existence of God, than upon establishing a relationship with God, theosis and theoria. <laughs> Latin Church In the Latin or Western Church terms derived from the Latin word contemplatio such as, in English, contemplation, are generally used in languages largely derived from Latin, rather than the Greek term theoria. The equivalence of the Latin and Greek terms was noted by John Cassian, whose writings influenced the whole of Western monasticism, in his conferences. However, Catholic writers do sometimes use the Greek term. Topic. 
Meditation and contemplation In discursive meditation, mind and imagination and other faculties are actively employed in an effort to understand our relationship with God. In contemplative prayer, this activity is curtailed, so that contemplation has been described as a gaze of faith, a silent love. There is no clear-cut boundary between Christian meditation and Christian contemplation, and they sometimes overlap. Meditation serves as a foundation on which the contemplative life stands, the practice by which someone begins the state of contemplation. John of the Cross described the difference between discursive meditation and contemplation by saying, the difference between these two conditions of the soul is like the difference between working, and enjoyment of the fruit of our work, between receiving a gift, and profiting by it, between the toil of traveling and the rest of our journey's end. Mata al Miskin, an Oriental Orthodox monk has posited, Meditation is an activity of one's spirit by reading or otherwise, while contemplation is a spontaneous activity of that spirit. In meditation, man's imaginative and thinking power exert some effort. Contemplation then follows to relieve man of all effort. Contemplation is the soul's inward vision and the heart's simple repose in God. Topic: <inaudible> Contemplative prayer. An exercise long used among Christians for acquiring contemplation, one that is available to everyone, whether he be of the clergy or of any secular occupation is that of focusing the mind by constant repetition of phrase or word. St. John Cassian recommended use of the phrase, O God, make speed to save me, O Lord, make haste to help me. Another formula for repetition is the name of Jesus, or the Jesus Prayer, which has been called, the mantra of the Orthodox Church. Although the term, Jesus Prayer, is not found in the Fathers of the Church. The author of The Cloud of Unknowing recommended use of a monosyllabic word, such as God or love. <laughs> Eastern Orthodox churches The Jesus Prayer, which, for the early fathers, was just a training for repose, the later Byzantines developed into hesychasm, a spiritual work of its own, attaching to it technical requirements and various stipulations that became a matter of serious theological controversy, and are still of great interest to Byzantine, Russian and other Eastern churches. While he maintains his practice of the Jesus Prayer, the hesychast cultivates nepsis, watchful attention. Sobriety contributes to this mental ascesis that rejects tempting thoughts, it puts a great emphasis on focus and attention. The hesychast is to pay extreme attention to the consciousness of his inner world and to the words of the Jesus Prayer, not letting his mind wander in any way at all. The Jesus Prayer invokes an attitude of humility essential for the attainment of theoria. The Jesus Prayer is also invoked to pacify the passions, as well as the illusions that lead a person to actively express these passions. The worldly, neurotic mind is habitually accustomed to seek perpetuation of pleasant sensations and to avoid unpleasant ones. This state of incessant agitation of the mind is attributed to the corruption of primordial knowledge and union with God the fall of man and the defilement and corruption of consciousness, or noose. According to Saint Theophan the Recluse, though the Jesus prayer has long been associated with the prayer of the heart, they are not synonymous. Topic. Roman Catholic Church Methods of prayer in the Roman Catholic Church include recitation of the Jesus Prayer, which "...combines the Christological hymn of Philippians 2 verses 6–11 with the cry of the publican Luke 18 verse 13 and the blind man begging for light Mark 10 verses 46–52. By it the heart is open to human wretchedness and the Saviour's mercy." Invocation of the holy name of Jesus, recitation, as recommended by St. John Cassian, of, O God, come to my assistance, O Lord, make haste to help me, or other verses of scripture, repetition of a single monosyllabic word, as suggested by the cloud of unknowing, such as, God, or, Love, the method used in centering prayer, the use of Lectio Divina. In modern times, centering prayer, which is also called prayer of the heart and prayer of simplicity, has been popularized by Thomas Keating, drawing on hesychasm and the cloud of unknowing. 
The practice of contemplative prayer has also been encouraged by the formation of associations like the Julian Meetings and the Fellowship of Meditation. Topic: <laughs> Stages. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Models. Dionysus the Pseudo-Areopagite According to the standard ascetic formulation of this process, as formulated by Dionysus the Pseudo-Areopagite, there are three stages Catharsis or purification Theoria or illumination, also called natural or acquired contemplation Union or theosis, also called infused or Higher contemplation, indwelling in God, vision of God, deification, union with God, purification, and illumination of the noetic faculty are preparations for the vision of God. Without this preparations, it is impossible for man's selfish love to be transformed into selfless love. This transformation takes place during the higher level of the stage of illumination called theoria, literally meaning vision, in this case, vision by means of unceasing and uninterrupted memory of God. Those who remain selfish and self-centered with a hardened heart, closed to God's love, will not see the glory of God in this life. However, they will see God's glory eventually, but as an eternal and consuming fire and outer darkness. <laughs> <laughs> Alternative models In the Advance to Contemplation Augustine spoke of seven stages. The first three are merely natural preliminary stages, corresponding to the vegetative, sensitive and rational levels of human life. The fourth stage is that of virtue or purification. The fifth is that of the tranquility attained by control of the passions. The sixth is entrance into the divine light, the illuminative stage. The seventh is the indwelling or unitive stage that is truly mystical contemplation. Saint Teresa of Avila described four degrees or stages of mystical union incomplete mystical union, or the prayer of quiet or supernatural recollection, when the action of God is not strong enough to prevent distractions, and the imagination still retains a certain liberty, full or semi-ecstatic union, when the strength of the divine action keeps the person fully occupied but the senses continue to act, so that by making an effort, the person can cease from prayer, Ecstatic union, or ecstasy, when communications with the external world are severed or nearly so, and one can no longer at will move from that state, and Transforming or deifying union, or spiritual marriage properly of the soul with God, the first three are weak, medium, and the energetic states of the same grace. The transforming union differs from them specifically and not merely in intensity. It consists in the habitual consciousness of a mysterious grace which all shall possess in heaven, the anticipation of the divine nature. The soul is conscious of the divine assistance in its superior supernatural operations, those of the intellect and the will. Spiritual marriage differs from spiritual espousals inasmuch as the first of these states is permanent and the second only transitory. Topic: <laughs> Catharsis purification. In the Orthodox churches, theosis results from leading a pure life, practicing restraint and adhering to the commandments, putting the love of God before all else. This metamorphosis transfiguration or transformation results from a deep love of God. Saint Isaac the Syrian says that, "...paradise is the love of God, in which the bliss of all the Beatitudes is contained," and that, "...the tree of life is the love of God." Homily 72. Theoria is thus achieved by the pure of heart who are no longer subject to the afflictions of the passions. It is a gift from the Holy Spirit to those who, through observance of the commandments of God and ascetic practices see praxis, kenosis, pustinia and schema, have achieved dispassion, purification precedes conversion and constitutes a turning away from all that is unclean and unwholesome. This is a purification of mind and body. As preparation for theoria, however, the concept of purification in this three-part scheme refers most importantly to the purification of consciousness nous, the faculty of discernment and knowledge wisdom, whose awakening is essential to coming out of the state of delusion that is characteristic of the worldly-minded. After the nous has been cleansed, the faculty of wisdom may then begin to operate more consistently. 
With a purified noose, clear vision and understanding become possible, making one fit for contemplative prayer. In the Eastern Orthodox ascetic tradition called hesychasm, humility, as a saintly attribute, is called holy wisdom or sophia. Humility is the most critical component to humanity's salvation. Following Christ's instruction to go into your room or closet and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. Matthew chapter 6 verse 6, the hesychast withdraws into solitude in order that he or she may enter into a deeper state of contemplative stillness. By means of this stillness, the mind is calmed, and the ability to see reality is enhanced. The practitioner seeks to attain what the Apostle Paul called unceasing prayer. Some Eastern Orthodox theologians object to what they consider an overly speculative, rationalistic, and insufficiently experiential nature of Roman Catholic theology, and confusion between different aspects of the Trinity. Topic. Contemplation, Theoria, Illumination In the Orthodox churches, noetic prayer is the first stage of Theoria. Theoria proper is the vision of God, which is beyond conceptual knowledge, like the difference between reading about the experience of another, and reading about one's own experience. In the Roman Catholic Church, in natural or acquired contemplation there is one dominant thought or sentiment which recurs constantly and easily although with little or no development amid many other thoughts, beneficial or otherwise. The prayer of simplicity often has a tendency to simplify itself even in respect to its object, leading one to think chiefly of God and of his presence, but in a confused manner. Definitions similar to that of St. Alphonsus Maria de Liguori are given by Adolphe Tonkery, a simple gaze on God and divine things proceeding from love and tending thereto, and St. Francis de Sales, a loving, simple and permanent attentiveness of the mind to divine things. In the words of St. Alphonsus Maria de Liguori, acquired contemplation consists in seeing at a simple glance the truths which could previously be discovered only through prolonged discourse. Reasoning is largely replaced by intuition and affections and resolutions, though not absent, are only slightly varied and expressed in a few words. Similarly, St. Ignatius of Loyola, in his 30-day retreat or spiritual exercises beginning in the second week, with its focus on the life of Jesus, describes less reflection and more simple contemplation on the events of Jesus' life. These contemplations consist mainly in a simple gaze and include an application of the senses to the events, to further one's empathy for Jesus' values, to love him more and to follow him more closely. Natural or acquired contemplation has been compared to the attitude of a mother watching over the cradle of her child, she thinks lovingly of the child without reflection and amid interruptions. The Catechism of the Catholic Church states, What is contemplative prayer? Saint Teresa answers, contemplative prayer oracion mental, in my opinion is nothing else than a close sharing between friends, it means taking time frequently to be alone with him who we know loves us, contemplative prayer seeks him whom my soul loves. It is Jesus, and in him, the Father. We seek him, because to desire him is always the beginning of love, and we seek him in that pure faith which causes us to be born of him and to live in him. In this inner prayer we can still meditate, but our attention is fixed on the Lord himself. <inaudible> Unity theosis. In the Orthodox churches, the highest theoria, the highest consciousness that can be experienced by the whole person, is the vision of God. God is beyond being, he is a hyper-being, God is beyond nothingness. Nothingness is a gulf between God and man. God is the origin of everything, including nothingness. This experience of God in hypostasis shows God's essence as incomprehensible, or uncreated. God is the origin, but has no origin, hence, he is apophatic and transcendent in essence or being, and cataphatic in foundational realities, immanence and energies. This ontic or ontological theoria is the observation of God, a noose in a state of ecstasy or ecstasis, called the eighth day, is not internal or external to the world, outside of time and space, it experiences the infinite and limitless God. Noose is the eye of the soul. Matthew chapter 6 verses 22 to 34. Insight into being and becoming called noesis through the intuitive truth called faith, in God action through faith and love for God, leads to truth through our contemplative faculties. This theory, or speculation, as action in faith and love for God, is then expressed famously as, Beauty shall save the world. 
This expression comes from a mystical or nosiological perspective, rather than a scientific, philosophical or cultural one. In the Roman Catholic Church, infused or higher contemplation, also called intuitive, passive or extraordinary, is a supernatural gift by which a person's mind will become totally centered on God. It is a form of mystical union with God, a union characterized by the fact that it is God, and God only, who manifests himself. Under this influence of God, which assumes the free cooperation of the human will, the intellect receives special insights into things of the spirit, and the affections are extraordinarily animated with divine love. This union that it entails may be linked with manifestations of a created object, as, for example, visions of the humanity of Christ or an angel or revelations of a future event, etc. They include miraculous bodily phenomena sometimes observed in ecstatics. In the Roman Catholic Church, infused contemplation, described as a divinely originated, general, non conceptual, loving awareness of God, is, according to Thomas Dubay, the normal, ordinary development of discursive prayer, which it gradually replaces. He writes, It is a wordless awareness and love that we of ourselves cannot initiate or prolong. The beginnings of this contemplation are brief and frequently interrupted by distractions. The reality is so unimposing that one who lacks instruction can fail to appreciate what exactly is taking place. Initial infused prayer is so ordinary and unspectacular in the early stages that many fail to recognize it for what it is. Yet with generous people, that is, with those who try to live the whole gospel wholeheartedly and who engage in an earnest prayer life, it is common. Dubé considers infused contemplation as common only among those who try to live the whole gospel wholeheartedly and who engage in an earnest prayer life. Other writers view contemplative prayer in its infused supernatural form as far from common. John Baptist Scaramelli, reacting in the 17th century against quietism, taught that asceticism and mysticism are two distinct paths to perfection, the former being the normal, ordinary end of the Christian life, and the latter something extraordinary and very rare. Jordan Amon considered that this idea of the two paths was an innovation in spiritual theology and a departure from the traditional Catholic teaching. And Jacques Maritain proposed that one should not say that every mystic necessarily enjoys habitual infused contemplation in the mystical state, since the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not limited to intellectual operations. <laughs> False spiritual knowledge In the Orthodox churches, theoria is regarded to lead to true spiritual knowledge, in contrast to the false or incomplete knowledge of rational thought, see, q, conjecture, speculation, dianoia, stochastic and dialectics. After illumination or theoria, humanity is in union with God and can properly discern, or have holy wisdom. Hence theoria, the experience or vision of God, silences all humanity. The most common false spiritual knowledge is derived not from an experience of God, but from reading another person's experience of God and subsequently arriving at one's own conclusions, believing those conclusions to be indistinguishable from the actual experienced knowledge. False spiritual knowledge can also be iniquitous, generated from an evil rather than a holy source. The gift of the knowledge of good and evil is then required, which is given by God. Humanity, in its finite existence as created beings or creatures, can never, by its own accord, arrive at a sufficiently objective consciousness. Theosis is the gradual submission of a person to the good, who then with divine grace from the person's relationship or union with God, attains deification. Illumination restores humanity to that state of faith existent in God, called noesis, before humanity's consciousness and reality was changed by their fall. Spiritual somnolence In the Orthodox churches, false spiritual knowledge is regarded as leading to spiritual delusion Russian prelest, Greek plani, which is the opposite of sobriety. Sobriety called nepsis means full consciousness and self-realization giving true spiritual knowledge called true gnosis. Prelest or plani is the estrangement of the person to existence or objective reality, an alienation called amartia. This includes damaging or vilifying the noose, or simply having a non-functioning noetic and neptic faculty. Evil is, by definition, the act of turning humanity against its creator and existence. 
Misotheism, a hatred of God, is a catalyst that separates humanity from nature, or vilifies the realities of ontology, the spiritual world and the natural or material world. Reconciliation between God the uncreated and man is reached through submission in faith to God the eternal, i.e. transcendence rather than transgression magic. The Trinity as nous, word and spirit hypostasis is, ontologically, the basis of humanity's being or existence. The Trinity is the creator of humanity's being via each component of humanity's existence, origin as nous ex nihilo, inner experience or spiritual experience, and physical experience, which is exemplified by Christ logos or the uncreated prototype of the highest ideal and his saints. The following of false knowledge is marked by the symptom of somnolence or awake sleep and, later, psychosis. Theoria is opposed to allegorical or symbolic interpretations of church traditions. False asceticism or cults In the orthodox practice, once the stage of true discernment diacrisis is reached called phronema, one is able to distinguish false gnosis from valid gnosis and has holy wisdom. The highest holy wisdom, Sophia, or Hagia Sophia, is cultivated by humility or meekness, akin to that personified by the Theotokos and all of the saints that came after her in Christ, collectively referred to as the Ecclesia or Church. This community of unbroken witnesses is the Orthodox Church. Wisdom is cultivated by humility, emptying of oneself, and remembrance of death against thymus, ego, greed, and selfishness, and the passions. Practicing asceticism is being dead to the passions and the ego, collectively known as the world. God is beyond knowledge and the fallen human mind, and as such, can only be experienced in His hypostasis through faith, noetically. False ascetism leads not to reconciliation with God and existence, but toward a false existence based on rebellion to existence. Topic: <laughs> Scientific research. Fifteen Carmelite nuns allowed scientists to scan their brains with fMRI while they were meditating, in a state known as unio mystica or theoria. The results showed the regions of the brain that were activated when they considered themselves to be in mystical union with God. <laughs> <laughs> Modern philosophy In modern times theoria is sometimes treated as distinct from the meaning given to it in Christianity, linking the word not with contemplation but with speculation. Boethius c. 480 or 525 translated the Greek word theoria into Latin, not as contemplatio but as speculatio, and theoria is taken to mean speculative philosophy. A distinction is made, more radical than in ancient philosophy, between theoria and praxis, theory and practice. See also Notes Subnotes <inaudible> <inaudible> <inaudible>